Good evening, everybody. My name is David Goodman. I'm the um, director of the China Studies Center. And before we start, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which the university is and on which you are too. I recognize the continuing connection of the traditional owners to land, water and culture, and I pay my respect to their elders past, present and emerging. My job is to do two things as we start, other than that. One is to remind you that when you're asking questions, please use the Q&A function in Zoom. We found that to be the best way to go because the event will be moderated by Professor Tony Welch of the School of Education. Uh, and I'm now going to hand over to him. He's a member of the executive committee of the China Studies Center and an old friend. And he's usually very, very, very nice, very good value. Over to you, Tony. Thank you, David. Um, welcome everyone to this um, research forum um, where we're delighted to have two colleagues from the University of Sydney's Business School, Associate Professor Rachel Hines Wesson and Dr. Ji Kai Ying. Um, Rachel is an Associate Professor of Work Integrated Learning and the Director of the Work Integrated Learning Hub within the Business School. She's um, a glutton for punishment with two PhDs, as well as a Master's in Creative Writing and has, um, among other distinctions, been a visiting scholar at the University of Wisconsin-Madison which as many of you would know is one of the United States um, research powerhouses. Um, Dr. Kaiying Ji is a lecturer in accounting also within the business school um, and specializes in among other things, international finance reporting standards, which I must say I had to look up. Um, and um, its goodwill impairment testing regime. She's a chartered financial analyst and a member of the CPA Australia. And her interests include financial regulation reporting, earnings forecasts, and um, various forms of um, accounting behavior. We're delighted to have the two of them uh, present this evening on work integrated learning and employability in China and Australia. And I'll turn it over to them. Great, thanks so much, Tony. And thanks so much for the welcome to David. Uh, very happy to be here today and be a part of the Bookworm series and to kick off with a potential white paper that we've recently released, freely available. And it's actually part of a, a bigger project. And I'm here today presenting with my partner, Kai Ying, and also someone who's not here today, I'd just like to acknowledge uh, Bing Wu Berberich, who's also uh, an international partner for us from China, but has recently moved to the UK. She can't be here today and we're presenting on her behalf as well. I'd also like to acknowledge the financial support of this white paper and this presentation today that was sponsored by the University of Sydney China Study Centre. And we're really pleased to be able to release this freely. And also it's the first work that I have done personally and been a part of with Kai Ying in terms of having a white paper that has started off in English and then been translated into Mandarin. So we're really, really excited about that. And we'll talk a little bit about the challenges that we went through to get that as best as we could. So I'm going to lead the first part of the presentation and then I'm gonna hand over to Kai Ying. So in terms of just giving a context of why we've done this and why we've established this community of researchers, both in Australia, Sydney, and also spanning into China, mainly Zhuzhou and Shanghai, is because we really believe that we can learn from one another. And it's really important, especially now we have what, what's happening in the media and also the geopolitical politics that's occurring. Uh, we find it's actually ever more important now to establish much stronger relationships in China when it comes to employability development for our students and also work integrated learning. 
Now, work integrated learning for us can mean different things. And we understand by translating the white paper from English to Mandarin, that was one of the terms that was quite tricky for us and to get right in, in Mandarin. So it's really important to kind of allow for the context of operation in terms of, in terms of this white paper establishment. For us in Australia, work integrated learning is well established. You will see work integrated learning and career development learning at most, if not all, higher ed institutions. And it's about a purposely designed curriculum where students will really focus on work experience and link theory to practice and practice to theory so that they're better prepared for the career changes that they will need to meet in the future, in the near future and present, especially with COVID-19 impact. And we want them to be as ready as possible. And we really feel that we are responsible for that. And there's lots of philosophy around that. Are we responsible for the future students who come to us? Are we, are we responsible for their employment destination? Are we responsible for their employment skill development? And are we responsible for a, a healthy and relevant and influential career trajectory? Who, and if we're not responsible, who is responsible for that? So these are some of the problems of practice that we are looking at on a continual basis. And from Kai and I's perspective, we feel that we are responsible for that, but that we are part of a community. So responsibility needs to be shared amongst ourselves as a community, as educators, with the students, with community, with family and with industry. So for us, this project is all about exploring relationships with China and how can we learn from one another in terms of the expertise we have here in Australia around work integrated learning and career development learning. But not to, not to consider that things like this aren't happening in China, but what can we learn from one another and build those bridges that will be strong and lasting into the future. So this was one of the high reasons that we decided to really focus on this white paper. And we really made that decision on purpose that we wanted something to start with for the China community to ha have an understanding of how Australia is structuring their work integrated learning and employability so that we can have those shared understandings and begin new and future relationships moving forward. So why Australia and China? Well, for us at the business school here at the university, uh, the Chinese national student international education is really key and important. We, we majority of our students actually come from China. So we have, um, we have a key stake in this, in this question, why Australia and China? And also nationally, education, international education is one of Australia's fourth largest export industries. So we know that this is important both for Australia and in international markets, including China. And as you can see from the slide here, we've just put some data together. Thanks to Kai Ying. Thanks, Kai Ying, the data expert. Uh, just to give you an understanding of from 2020, what that looked like on the international market, but specifically 51% of that market was from China. Obviously, the, tra the pause on travel has caused a decrease and a, and, a, and a pause on travel, so that has greatly impacted us. But it hasn't impacted us to stop having relationships and, and we have not ceased to explore how can we really understand the similarities, but also the differences between our different countries and how we can help our students have a really prosperous career moving forward, especially with the unknown future of COVID and how it's impacted us in so many different ways. So in this slide here, you'll see that we've just quickly documented the, the similarities and differences between Australia and China in terms of the context. And I won't go into detail here, it's all here and you can read that. But I think what's really important is that Australia does see themselves as a developed economy and they do view China as emerging market, but whether China views themselves as an emerging market, that is questionable. Also, we have a very different population number, as you can see here, it's vastly different. And also we have very different ways of doing politics and that also then links into culture. And the reason that I point this out is because this actually had a huge influence on our data results. And we'll talk more to that in the next coming slides. So just to reiterate, 
what we mean by work integrated learning as we move forward is that we really wanna make sure that we're preparing our students for work within industry so that students can really practice that. And what we're speaking to is the pre-experienced student at the undergrad level or at the post-grad level at a university context. They might not necessarily know where they wanna end up for their career, or they could be coming to university to change careers, or maybe they're coming to university to explore options. When we have the student in perspective in terms of their needs and their desires and their, their understandings or lack of understandings around where they wanna head in their career, this does influence how we create curriculum and how we support students. It's really important that we're able to provide a tailored approach to each student's needs and the employability strategy that we want to implement. But at the same token, we have mass numbers. So how do you balance that? By working with China, what we're hoping to achieve is unravel the, that differences because they have such a big population in China. So we're hoping we can learn a lot. How do they ensure their students are job ready at such mass scale? We want to learn from that. And hopefully China will want to learn from us in terms of our high quality will programs. So planning and implementing authentic assessment, what does that mean? That means that we want our, we want our students to experiment, to participate and to learn from assessments that are either graded or not graded or can be part of the curriculum or extracurricular as part of their program experience at university that actually mirrors what they would do in professional practice once they graduate. For that, for us, is an authentic, authentic assessment and it's very closely aligned to work experience, very closely aligned to students working side by side with clients and learning from one another. And again, we wanna do that in a tailored measured way and always thinking that career is not a stagnant process, it changes. It's a bit like a playground in a children's field of wonder. It's all different. There's all different levels. There's all different types of complexity and adventure. That's what a career needs to be for a student. It's not always set smoothly in concrete. One never knows what's around the corner, but one needs to be prepared. So we're very keen to open up discussion tonight after we've shared some results, which I'll now lead on to Kaiyin's slides because we're really wanting to partner with more people in China, but we're also wanting to build upon these white papers and, and make sure whatever else comes out of our outcomes really has meaning to the audiences that we want to serve. So Kai, over to you. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you, David, Tony. Uh, so uh, I'm Kai Ji from the Business School. I have to say that it has been a very exciting journey with working with Rachel and being on this project. Uh, personally, with my background as an international student, uh, when I initially came to Australia uh, and then became an academic teaching and researching in will and accounting, helping international students, I feel. Uh, so in this white paper, we uh, reported some preliminary research that we did in this project. Uh, in the first study, uh, we looked at students' employability development from five major well programs and found that their skills have developed differently from different programs. Uh, and in the second study, we focused on Australian and the Chinese students. And we found that students from different cultural and educational backgrounds actually develop different uh, employability skills, even if they're enrolled in the same program. So next, I'm going to explain a bit more details about each of the studies we did. Uh, so the first study here to collect the data because of its magnitude. Uh, it involves 380 students, uh, participants enrolled in either undergraduate or postgraduate course of Australian universities. Uh, and the real programs we examined include uh, an industry placement program in which students did a, a six week full time or a three months part time internship with a recognized industry partner and a program that requires students to complete one or more projects with industry and community partners. And we also looked at a two week international study to a program uh, with destinations in India, Philippines and China. Uh, the next one we looked at is a simulated program we call a theater of board 
that students are required to act as board members when compete, uh, completing projects and tasks in teams. Uh, and lastly, there's also an online well program delivered last year uh, as a response to the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. This program was initially de delivered physically, face-to-face, -face, and then because of all the travel restrictions and the social distancing, et cetera, has to be moved online. So we did an evaluation study on that program as well. Uh, we used a mixed method approach in this study. Uh, students were asked to assess their employability skills for online surveys before and after participating in the program. And then they were also invited to focus group interviews to feedback more details about what they have learned, how they learned, and the challenges they encountered, et cetera, in each of the WELL program. Uh, in this study, we noticed a number of skills, uh, such as communication and teamwork skills. Uh, and by participating in a WILL program, students are commonly better understanding their responsibilities in a workplace as well. Uh, apart from these commonly developed skills, students also highlighted some unique skills uh, as the most developed in each program. Uh, for example, they learned to be open-minded when undertaking a placement uh, in the industry and that they improved their creativity and agility from international study tour. And we reported some of the results in another paper. Uh, and they also learned how to take initiative to learn actively when the experience, uh, experiential learning had to move from face-to-face -to, -face to an online mode. Yeah. Uh, this is all interesting to well-educate, provide some evidence that uh, needs to be purposely designed to nurture specific employability skills. And we need to be uh, careful in matching or allocating candidates to each of the programs, depending maybe on their skills and the knowledge readiness and also on the expected employability learning outcomes. Uh, may I please go to the next page, Rachel? Thank you. Uh, and in the second study, we looked at participants' employability skills development from two international industry placement programs. And both programs are offered by our Wheel Hub in the business school. Uh, the two programs are actually the same in terms of cost structure assessments, uh, placement activities. It's just the one program had 100% Chinese national students and the other one with 100% Australian national students, which provides us with a perfect context for a comparison study. So the students did a six week industry placement program located in Shanghai and Beijing. Uh, and I was coordinating the program with uh, the 100% Chinese students back then, which gives me a bit of convenience in collecting data and or motivating students. Uh, and we adopted the same mixed method approach as the first study students and 12 Australian students uh, responded to our pre and the post surveys. A couple of things to highlight from this study. So firstly, which is not pre, uh, show, show up here, but we find or are more confident about their employability skills. Uh, when students were asked to self-assist their post-program employability skills, the rating for Australian students were significantly higher than the Chinese students. Uh, we find this pretty interesting. Uh, as for Chinese students, this is actually a program in their home country. Uh, and uh, interestingly, they were not as comparing to the Australian students who were working in a foreign environment. Yeah, so as Rachel said, um, the results here is uh, presented as the conversation starter and we would like to open up the conversation or discussion with audience and you know if you have any insights yes, that would be very helpful uh, and secondly as shown on this page here we find that when it comes to the most developed employability skills it is also different between Australian and the Chinese students uh, for example, the top three most developed skills for Australian students are professionalism, presentation, uh, 
uh, communication, teamwork skills, and the professionalism. Uh, we think there are a number of facts attributed to the results here. Uh, firstly, is the cultural and the educational background of the students. Uh, given the individualism and the low power distance cultural background of Australian students, they were raised in an environment that they are encouraged to voice up ideas and to present themselves in the public. Uh, so they actually emphasize presentation skills a lot more in the workplace. Uh, on the other hand, Chinese students were generally raised in a environment with very high power distance. So opinion, uh, if I may say so, it doesn't really matter that much. And it's usually the teamwork that matters. Uh, and the Chinese society always value the greatest benefit for the greatest amount of people, even when personal benefit needs to be sacrificed. And that's what I was always told uh, in my childhood. So uh, we also noticed that Chinese students value communication skills a lot uh, at the workplace. And this is understandable because we emphasize a lot uh, when come to the workplace, we uh, actually have expectation in terms of saying the appropriate things to the appropriate people in the appropriate context. So uh, in a sense, the skills identified as the most developed for the placement program is impacted by the students uh, as who they are as a person on one hand, and also heavily impacted by the expectations from the job market the students are potentially entering into. Uh, maybe next page, Rachel, thank you. So in a summary, we find in the two studies presented here is that uh, there should never be a one size fits all approach uh, when, we're talking, when, we are, when we are talking about work integrated learning. Uh, when we design well programs for employability skills enhancement, we need to take into consideration of things like uh, who are the participants, uh, what are their skills and the knowledge readiness, what are their cultural education skills requirements of the potential job market our graduates are, our graduates are entering into. And of course, we need to prepare our graduates with a global outlook and to be employable as a global citizen. Also I need to think about uh, as what we found in the first study that uh, what are the employability outcomes for a particular well program and do these outcomes match the needs and the wants of the skills improvement of the participants. So these are some of the highlights of our studies and I would like to hand over back to Rachel. Thanks, Kai Ying. So now I'm going to come to the close of the presentation. I've got one final slide and then some contact information that people can reach out to us if they would like more information or to even consider collaboration. So for us, moving forward and past the white papers, which we do hope to produce more and also uh, expand our relationship development in China with other university partners, we highly recommend when designing and delivering will curriculum, as Kai Ying suggested, that authenticity of the assessment and how it aligns to industry and works alongside industry is really important, as well as preparation and supporting mechanisms for program participants, which we like to term here in Australia as preparing during will and post learning, which I believe is something that I know China is very interested in and some of the partners that we have already established in Shanghai, they're very keen to talk to us and establish programs or shared programs around career development support mechanism. So we're quite excited about that area of expertise. Okay, so if anyone would like further information, would like to know how to get involved or would like just to reach out to us and let us know what they think about the white papers, uh, please email me directly or please go to the Will Hub Research Group website where we actually do have the white papers there freely available both in English and Mandarin, as well as our op-ed pieces in the media. We recently had an article in the Sydney Herald and The Age 
and we've been doing some blog posts as well. So I'm uh, really excited about working with Kai and being on that moving forward too. And very excited about continuing our relationship with the Chinese Studies Centre. So thank you once again, Tony and David, and I'll hand back over to you, Tony.